Welcome to Pop Dust Presents. I'm here today with Cisco Adler. How you doing, bud? I'm doing pretty damn good. How are you? I'm happy to be here. I'm happy On to Earth, have you. At this moment in time. I'm not sure if that's <laughs> genuine. It's a very hippie land answer of you. That's what I'm... That's, which is the upcoming album. Yes, good segue, my friend. June 14th? <laughs> yes, yes. It is your third studio album, and it's forthcoming. Agreed. You just performed for us, including the song Something More, which yeah. I believe is the lead single from the album. It is, it is. And you got a cool video for it. I do. And we wrote about it on Pop Dust. You guys are awesome. Thank you. You know, we do what we can. So tell us about the album. The album... Uh, just describe the packaging. The packaging is, um, is me butt naked with boots and a hat on, running into the, into the woods towards hippie land. That checks out. I mean, it's more of a symbol of like me getting back to like, we're, we're always trying to get back to that innocence of that first breath when we, were, when we came out butt naked before they clipped me. Yep. <laughs> and then you're, ah! you know what I mean? Before you take a first breath, then your first cry. I assume that first, that moment in between is like truly magical. And I'm, I'm trying to get back to that. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's all the way back. Yeah, yeah. I'm all, that is like square negative one. All the way back would be inside. Yeah, so not yeah. all the way back. No, not all the way back. Okay, between the first breath and the first cry. Yes, that's your first happiness and your first sadness. And then from then you're jaded and you're always trying to go back. Or at least I feel like I am. Uh, or trying to identify um, every new experience and how to process it in context to this wild ride. Not to get too deep on you and hippie land, but that's just what I am. And this album, it is your third one, and you say you're trying to get back to a feeling. Um, what, wh how is it different musically? I feel like the first album was um, a, more of a throwing sort of spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks and trying to appease what I thought were my influences, where I think, and listen, I love that album. And, and the second one, I feel like, maybe got me closer. And then on this one, for some reason, it just feels um, truly comfortable and like, you know, it feels like a warm bed. And how long has it taken you to get to that point of being comfortable? My whole damn life. And has music always been a part of that damn life? Uh, you know what? I found hip hop when I was like uh, maybe 14. You know, it was my music, probably similarly to how rock and roll was my parents' music when they found it and their parents were like, what is that garbage? It's the devil's music, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I remember my dad listening to the Ghetto Boys and going like, no, that's not music. Hip hop uh, has this spontaneity, has this, you know, um, witty lyricism, has this making something out of nothing thing that I think punk rock had, that rock and roll had, that yes. all these sort of cultural moments had. Um, so ever since I found that, you know, I've been on a search to just absorb as much music as possible. You know, hip hop hit a ceiling for me, so I picked up a guitar. Rock got boring to me, so I went back to hip hop. You know, now I'm trying to look at like world music. And today on my Uber ride from the airport, the, the dude was playing all this fucking Indian pop music that was so ill that I'm like, can I take your email and you can send me a bunch of this stuff? Because it's like, I don't think I'd be exposed to it if it wasn't via someone who felt it was their music and they listened to it. What do you think is the percentile of, of hip hop in the, uh, the in fabric of, of, of me? the albums that you've released and comparatively maybe the first album versus this uh, upcoming no, I'd one? Say it's, I'd say like lyrically, um, I'm always mining my hip hop self. You know, I, I, I pretty much approach lyrics more as a rapper than as a singer. Bars. Bars, baby. Just because I like the way the, the, the pacing and the, the rhyme schemes and, and sort of how it flips over on each other rather than just getting a thought or a feeling across in a melody. Yeah. Um, so I'm always minding that. For me, it's a fantastic genre for music fans of, of any variety because it's so, it's like the ultimate remix and things, you know? It, you're yeah. kind of taking different elements from everywhere, putting them together, and there's just so much content Per section you know what I mean yeah and it's it's harder to get your point across with less words right it becomes more of a um, it's up to the listener to read between those words I definitely try to go back and forth I don't want to ever be one thing I try to always have my foot 
one foot on this side of the fence and this foot on that side of the fence. As a burgeoning rapper, who, who are your top, your top favorites of all time? De La Soul influenced me heavily. Um, Nas influenced me heavily. Nas, big fan of the show. Um, the Far Side, which I think are underappreciated in the lexicon of hip hop, just because maybe they were West Coast um, progressive hip hop at a time when West Coast was all gangster rap. G Love, who's now a close friend and collaborator, when I discovered his music and I saw him doing something completely different with hip hop and taking maybe the hip hop approach to the blues, to me it was like when I heard Baby Got Sauce, like the world over. You worked with what, Mike Posner? Yeah, yeah. And also Cody Simpson, who actually was here. We interviewed him, and I think we're going to roll a clip of that right now. Is it true that you carried the Olympic torch for Australia? It's true, Rio, yes. In the Rio Olympics? In the Rio Olympics, um, on, the, on the torch uh, relay, I carried it for Australia. Yeah, both, both my parents were um, um, swimming so for Australia, and I grew up swimming for Australia. And um, they asked me to be a part of it, you know, because I, I, I like to represent my country as much as I can as an athlete or as a musician, whatever. Damn yeah. it. Yeah. Damn it, he does wow. both? <laughs> oh, we're not. We're back. We're back. We're not. Right. So Cody. It's so Cody. Classic Cody. Honestly, <laughs> and the Tide. Adrian, his drummer, plays with me and played in my band Jam Town with uh, Donovan and G Love. Um, so he has no loyalty. No, no, no. A a loyalty to music. Loyalty to music. In your hat, there seems to be a match. Half like, of one. A half a match. Can half of a hat at this you, point. Yeah. So what's? Can you explain explain all this? Uh, shout out my buddy Nick Fouquet who made it for me. Um, Nick. I, I think it's just uh, this hat is also comfortable in its own skin, falling apart, getting better day by day as uh, as it ages, and and the uh, the signs of weathering only make it better. Yes. You know, and my son broke the match. My son grabbed it and broke it. So now it's a half of a match. Better. Better. Even better. better. Everything's better once it's affected. Is that the same approach you take with your music? You just make a song and then you break it a little bit? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, I try to um, learn and unlearn constantly. Um, and songs actually just come out. Like I write two or three songs a day, whether I'm doing it for a project or not. I can't really help it. Uh, it's a problem. It's a, it's a good problem. It's debilitating. In a good way. Did you lose your day job? I never had a day job. I, oh I delivered God. pizzas for one day because I wanted to buy a bag of weed. Very honest. <laughs> I mean, why else uncooked would you deliver pizzas? Uncooked pizzas, too. It was, you didn't you even know, cook them? You know that trend when you would deliver uncooked pizzas and they would cook it themselves? Oh, yeah. That was a funky year. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. It's frozen. It's like somewhere in between delivery and DiGiorno. Why? Which is what I am. I don't know that people were asking for that. They're like, uh, can you deliver a pizza, but uh, not, not so much cooked. Listen, I was just trying to buy a bag of weed. I wasn't trying to disrupt their business Were you plan. successful? I was, I was. Was it sort of like that first breath that you take before crying? That first high? I just want to say I was right because now weed is becoming legal everywhere. You and, were right. And, so, and you took a stand that day, and we no, have a lot I, to I, thank you for. You know, Are you from L.A.? Because you got the, the Los Angeles Lazy Days song, right? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 We were rocking out to that earlier. Oh, I love that. Are you L.A.-based? I grew up in L.A. and Maui. Very cool. My mom ran off to Maui when I was nine and, and brought me with her, and uh, I'm actually very thankful that she did because I grew up sort of out of the L.A. scene and not, and I think, you know, I benefited, I benefited from being naked, running in the woods, picking mushrooms. And, and now you're running through the woods naked. Again. In your music video. Yeah. No, Your, yeah, your so album yeah. art. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited for the new album, Hippie Land, June 14th. Thank you guys for, for spreading music. You know, I always feel like it's super important because um, there's so much music now, too. So, like, uh, thank you for not just exposing the mainstream or the you know, this or that, and trying to go into the cracks and find the stuff that's... I appreciate you. I'm going to cry. <laughs> this is the sweetest thing anybody's... I really do that. ...ever said. I do. All right, well... I do. Cheers. You know Popped us. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Thank you, guys.